Today we explain why thiazide diuretics are useful for so many disease states. Common thiazide and thiazide-like diuretics include hydrochlorothiazide, chlorothiazide, chlorthalidone, indapamide, and metolazone. Remember that a portion of the sodium that was filtered in the glomerulus gets reabsorbed in the DCT. The sodium crosses the apical membrane by way of sodium chloride symporters, or NCCs, and then by way of sodium potassium pumps to be reabsorbed back into the blood. The diuretic action of thiazides centers around the inhibition of these sodium chloride symporters. Blocking these symporters leaves more sodium in the lumen, which draws water into the lumen to increase urine output, hence the diuretic action and their usefulness in the treatment of edema due to, for example, heart failure and liver cirrhosis. Thiazide diuretics are also useful to treat high blood pressure, often in combination with other antihypertensive medications. Since they are diuretics, acutely they lower blood pressure by decreasing intravascular volume by increasing urine production. However, negative feedback mechanisms kick in and renin levels rise to counter this effect. Remember that increased renin release leads to an increase in blood pressure. This explains why thiazides are even more effective at lowering blood pressure when combined with an ACE inhibitor, or angiotensin receptor blocking drug. These medications decrease the production or effect of angiotensin II that rises with increased renin. In the long term, peripheral resistance falls due to the thiazides causing relaxation of smooth muscle cells, bringing about vasodilation. Hydrochlorothiazide has been shown to activate large conductance calcium activated potassium channels in smooth muscle cell membranes of the vasculature to cause hyperpolarization. This causes smooth muscle relaxation, which causes vasodilation to reduce peripheral resistance and blood pressure. Another proposed mechanism of action includes the hypothesis that chlorthalidone and indapamide decrease the release of endogenous digitalis-like natriuretic peptides. This increases the activity of the sodium potassium pumps in smooth muscle cells, increasing the sodium concentration outside of the cell, which increases the driving force for sodium to come into the cell via sodium calcium antiporters, driving more calcium out of the cell to cause smooth muscle relaxation and therefore vasodilation. For the treatment of recurrent calcium-containing kidney stones, the physician may prescribe a thiazide diuretic to decrease calcium levels in the urine. Remember that thiazides block sodium chloride symporters on the apical membrane of renal tubular cells in the DCT. This acts to further decrease intracellular sodium levels in the DCT cells and thus increase the driving force for sodium to move into the cell via sodium calcium antiporters on the basal lateral membrane. This increased antiporter activity moves more calcium that enters the cell via apical TRPV5 channels out of the cell, where it is then reabsorbed into the blood. Therefore, treatment with thiazides decreases calcium levels in the urine, lessening the risk for calcium stone reoccurrence. Since thiazide treatment increases the reabsorption of calcium into the blood, it has the added benefit of improving bone mineral density for those at risk for osteoporosis. Thiazides can also be used to reduce excess fluid in the inner ear in those with Meniere's disease to decrease the number of dizzy episodes in these patients. In summary, thiazide diuretics have multiple actions and indications. They are useful for edematous states, for pulling off water, such as with heart failure, liver cirrhosis, and Meniere's disease. They are also useful for hypertension, bone fracture prevention, to prevent the most common type of kidney stone, calcium-containing stones, and for diabetes insipidus. Try this question to assess your understanding.
If you answered A, you are correct. Thanks for watching.